Lilia, welcome. Good to have you here live from Egypt, if I understand correctly. Yes, uh, thank you. I'm I'm basically in Tunisia, but I'm currently in uh, in Egypt for uh, some conferences. So. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So you are an associate professor and researcher of computer sciences at the Higher Institute of Computer Sciences and Communication Technologies at a university I know myself very well because it's my home university, the University <laughs> of Sousse <Susan, laughs> in Tunisia, thank and you, um, you uh, um, have graduated um, also from. Uh, a couple of German uh, universities, uh, namely Braunschweig right. and Hannover. So there is a connection um, with uh, Germany. Indeed, um, you do hold a PhD, but also have the habilitation uh, for research. Thank you so much for being with us, uh, Lilia. Lilia, you. do you recall your first contact with open educational resources? Can you tell us in which context that was? Uh, okay. So actually, I'm... Uh very active in digital education uh, since, let's say, uh, 20 years. My first online course was on 2003. And um, specifically with open education, I was actually um, uh, interested in this topic when I have attended open ed conference in the United States in 2014. And Just after this conference, I was actually very um, uh, uh, motivated in order to, uh, uh, to to work on this uh, on this topic, and I was I'm very proud about that. I'm the first, uh, I'm author I'm co-author of the first MOOC in Tunisia in computer science, and this book was uh, deployed was in French was deployed on Fan France University in Umidi, and was deployed for two sessions. So. Um, and since that, that date, I was, I'm very, very active in open education, let's say. Well, that is very good to hear. Thank you for sharing how the journey has started. We're going to talk about um, a few things today with you. And um, the title um, of this conversation, if I may say so, is the uh, game changer. Of course, uh, the changer having OER in that. Um, demystifying the buzz around innovation, visibility and sustainability. Uh, we heard about sustainability a lot. We heard about innovation a lot. What I'm interested in. Um, with you know, knowing your position and your interest, and you talked about being active in this field for so many years, what do you think is, is, is the future about? What is your vision um, about innovation in teaching uh, and learning? And do you think or do OER actually contribute um, to, to that um, vision and, and the innovation in the field of teaching and learning? Uh, thank you very much for your question. Thank you very much again for the invitation, for giving me this chance actually to uh, to share um, some uh, projects, some uh, experiments that I have conducted around innovation, around uh, open education. So regarding your question, actually, I, my opinion first is that education is a, a basic human right. I mean, this is a very important uh, aspect and very important right to consider. Uh, and before speaking about innovation, let's have a look about the way that um, uh, we have conducted teaching and learning during the two last years during this COVID uh, crisis. Uh, I think that the situation in Germany may be different a little bit about uh, with, with uh, compared to Tunisia, but I will speak about my context at least and then Tunisian universities because I was uh, the head of the digital learning uh, unit, and now I'm uh, moving to the uh, uh, pedagogical innovation uh, and digital learning unit. Currently, I'm um, the head of this unit. Uh, and during the pandemic, we have faced a lot of issues. We have observed that there is a lot of content, but this content is not digitalized. Um, we have also observed that learners have problems in access to some online resources, uh, do not know which uh, resource to use. And for the teacher, it was also very complicated, the situation, because 
they they have a lot of content, but they don't know how to design their uh, their their courses and which content they they are allowed to use and which content is uh, is not possible to use in their uh, in their courses. So I have uh, um, precisely um, actually mentioned these three pillars, which are le the learner, the content, and the teacher, because these may these are the pillars of the didactical triangle of education. These are the main pillars of the education. So if we have uh, also a look on the way that the teaching was observed during the pandemic, for example, we have seen that there are two main form formats. The first format is uh, related to remote learning, which means that uh, just it was just giving the course online in a transmissive way. Okay, so the teacher was uh, in front of uh, his or her camera, uh, uh, showing his his or her slides, and uh, he was simply teaching as he was in uh, in the in class. But another model was also the online, the real online learning. So based on all this observation, we can say that uh, there is a lack of innovation. There is a lack of uh, doing things differently. Innovation is a very important aspect to consider in education because it will give us the opportunity to uh, uh, do things differently, as I said, but this, this uh, scenarios that we will, we will actually propose could be transferable, could be durable, and could be applied to different contexts. In this, in this situation, I think that open education resources can play a very important role because it open education resources could be considered as a very interesting tool to design this innovation, to design these innovative scenarios. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm happy that I was during the three last years in a very, very nice project, which is called Let's Learning Lab. This is a project of uh, uh, creating uh, learning labs in universities in MENA region. Uh, it was, I mean, we have actually uh, created a network uh, of four universities, Tunisia, Egypt, Lebanon, and Switzerland, University of Genève. And uh, we have created in these universities learning labs. These are actually spaces for incubation of innovation. And this incubation of innovation is also related to the tri didactical triangle that I have mentioned, because also we define the learning lab as a triangle composed of a space, a physical space or a virtual space, activities that are in innovative that would allow the incubation of innovation, and a community which will, uh, will which will use this activity and which will do these activities. Open educational resources are a very important part of these learning labs. And currently I'm speaking about open learning labs, which are learning labs that will incubate scenarios based on open education resources. Hopefully that I have answered your question. Definitely, definitely. So we're definitely moving from the resources uh, to the learning aspect of things. Um, you mentioned open learning, you mentioned innovation, um, and I... I think if I recall correctly, one of the things that you're also advocating for is a transformative uh, learning. Um, it, would you mind um, telling us a little bit more how transformative learning is different from what we know, if I may say so, as classical learning? So, uh, actually, learning now occurs uh, differently. It is implemented uh, um in accordance of the context, in, uh, we may actually adapt the learning process, the learning situation, based on the needs of the learner, based on the context of the learning. And this could be, as I say, it could be easily done through open education resources. The, the, uh, the, main, the main issue and the main point is that through, through this process of using open education resources, you may combine, reuse resources based on the needs of your context, based on the needs of your target group, based on the need, uh, on the context of the teaching. And this, this could be very interesting for our, uh, for our situation. So I, I may call the OER as being a vehicle for innovation, uh, if I'm yes. not mistaken. Now, you mentioned a few times uh, the context, and um, we know that um, context can differ from region to region, from country to country. 
Um, if we talk about um, the region uh, where you are based in, um, and um, you mentioned the MENA region, now also the Arab uh, region, what what do you think makes that region, um, you know, in particular regarding the language, um, some very, um, let's say, space uh, for promoting OERs? Do we have... Do we have chances, um, you know, promoting such resources uh, in a region, uh, let's say, where we speak another language than the most of the languages we know a content is produced? Yes. Thank you very much for this very nice question. Yes, uh, that's uh, very, very important for our region. Before that, I uh, actually um, emphasize the importance of languages using open educational resources, I'd like first to share with you, if you permit, two very interesting experiences that I, I have uh, conducted in my region. And in my opinion, th these experiences um, uh, gave me the opportunity to, uh, to, uh, to observe some lessons and to actually to build on these lessons. Uh, the first experiment was actually during the pandemic, and it was with the francophone agency for the Maghreb countries. Actually, we have observed that there is a lack of ICT skills for the teacher, and we have actually designed um, three experts from uh, Tunisia, Algeria, and Morocco. We have designed for the francophone agency uh, a, a spoke actually composed of, uh, uh, of uh, many resources for actually uh, acquisition of ICT uh, skills for teaching and uh, for teaching. And um, uh, around, let's say, 550 uh, uh, university teacher took part on, on this, uh, uh, this experiment and 300 were certified, actually, and we are proud about, about this, uh, actually, number of uh, colleagues who uh, actually uh, visited uh, this book and uh, learned through this uh, resource. The second experiment, which is really very innovative, uh, uh, I come back to the, um, to the project that I said, Learning Lab, and um, uh, to, uh, together with my colleague from Alexandria University, I'm currently in Alexandria, so together with my colleague, Professor Radel Khayat in this university in Egypt, uh, we actually, we have observed that in, uh, in both contexts, in Tunisia and in Egypt, we have been facing the same problems uh, in terms of using of uh, educational resources, in terms of awareness about the importance of openness and so on. And we have conducted a very, very uh, innovative in, uh, initiative that we have called OERVT at MENA. This initiative actually was uh, supported by Open Education Global Francophone, and we have actually set up a challenge. We have asked our colleagues that uh, we will, in 100 days, collect 100 open educational resources in the three languages, in Arabic, in French, and in English, because these three languages are used in our countries for teaching and for learning. And, uh, for our colleagues, it was uh, at the beginning a little bit difficult because uh, there is a lack of awareness uh, regarding open education. So we have actually together with the uh, colleagues from the region also uh, uh, animated some webinars for uh, explaining open education resources, the way that we can use these resources, uh, creative common li licenses, uh, open education concepts, and so on. And we have coached, let's say, our colleagues. And by the end, we have reached more than 100 resources. So we have collected more than uh, the number that we have fixed. And it was really a very, very, very nice uh, experiment, actually. Um, uh, uh, currently, for example, we are in discussion with uh, Lab Exchange, which is, which is a uh, platform um, from Harvard foundation to to move some resources from the wiki that we have actually created to some uh, to another environment so based on these two uh, experiments i have actually observed some things uh, and i think that language plays a very very important role because in my opinion it's uh, the right of uh, each person to learn in his own language. So um, uh, 
resources should be available in all languages. I, I, I belong to a community. When I was at the university, actually, I was in Germany, right? I have learned a German. But, I have, but once I finished my, my, uh, my studies, I was teaching in French. In Tunisia, we are teaching in French. Uh, that's when I observe my students now, they, they use more and more uh, resources in other languages. They use resources in English. In some universities in the MENA region, they use resources in, in Arabic, even in, in scientific, actually, uh, disciplines, and a lot of resources. So I think that multilingualism is a very, very important uh, thing. By the way, I have also observed that uh, during actually the last conference of Open Education Global, I was the chair of the first session um, in Arabic session, in Arabic uh, language. And thanks to Professor Colin de la Higora, uh, he was actually um, uh, pushing us to actually to promote uh, uh, sharing uh, resources in other languages in this conference. And it was a really an amazing experiment to speak in Arabic in this conference and to, to, to share the uh, experiments in, in, in our region. Yeah, that is very, very much um, uh, one of the uh, many examples, I hope, uh, existing in the region to promote um, multilingualism, but also, um, yeah, the, the difference, uh, accepting the difference or promoting other languages to create visibility. We talked about innovation. We talked about visibility. Um, how sustainable can our future be if open educational resources are in it. Um, in other words, when we talk about um, everything related to open educational resources, um, how about sustainability? Is that realistic? Can uh, OER be a vehicle for sustainability? That's true. Uh, it's, it's a very, very uh, important and deep question, let's say, <laughs> because sustainability is a question that we need actually to uh, to analyze also and to uh, to consider when we use open educational resources and um, uh, and in in general, let's say, because uh, um, uh, nowadays our universities are speaking about uh, sustainable de uh, development and uh, uh, how to uh, uh, actually achieve the, this SDG, Sustainable Development Goals. And, uh, and this topic is really um, one of the priorities of many universities uh, uh, also in our, my region. Uh, for example, um, one, uh, actually, I'm, as I said, I'm in Egypt, but I'm currently for for this project, for this project also meeting, which is called Open to Sustain. Open to Sustain means that we are promoting the idea that we will use open education resources for achieving SDGs. We, we, will, use, uh, uh, we will use the fact that we can access to many resources and that way we will uh, guarantee that we are away, uh, aware about the SDGs. And for that, what we have chosen, because it's difficult to actually to target 17 SDGs, so we have actually, uh, we are currently focusing on SDG 5, which is uh, SDG on gender equality. And um, uh, for that, we have, we were thinking about something innovative, what we have done, actually, we have uh, uh, designed a spoke on gender in digital education. But what we are using in this book are open education resources. So we are actually promoting and uh, sharing knowledge uh, regarding this topic, but through, uh, uh, through uh, uh, open education resources. So it's always in the same sense, in the same uh, way. Uh, OERs will, will play the role of, uh, uh, of a locomotive for sharing uh, ideas, for, uh, for promoting uh, important things such as sustainability, such as gender, such as the quality in education, but through open education resources. 
Yeah, we had um, this morning also our guest from the UNESCO, from the German Commission um, UNESCO here, and um, he talked about the importance yeah. of uh, promoting uh, SDG 4, which he also addressed um, uh, with the quality and inclusiveness. Um, and I'm happy to hear um, that there are more experiments out there uh, going in the sense of sustainability. Lilia, we talked about so many things happening now, and you mentioned when your journey started in your interest about open education, and I and I wish you and everyone uh, on your team and the colleagues um, a lot of success. Looking into the future, 10 years from now, you know, we are celebrating 10 years of OER camp, but say we meet again in 10 years, what do you think we'll be talking about? What's going to happen uh, what opportunities do we have for OER as a game changer? Yes, uh, thank you for this uh, very nice question. I also, because it's a, a question that gives me the opportunity to dream, actually, to, to go in the, the future and to, to think about the future. Um, I think that the future belongs to artificial intelligence. I think that artificial intelligence will play a very, very important role in the reuse of open educational resources in the way that it will help us to combine resources, to find resources, to uh, search for resources, to actually to, to combine these resources adapted to our context. So tools which will be provided by artificial intelligence will play a very important role. Second thing, which, which is also related to my research topic, because I'm working um, a lot on uh, personalization of learning and assessment and so on. So I think that uh, uh, more and more we will move towards a personalization. It's currently done, but there, there will be more uh, work to be uh, done regarding uh, personalization. In particular, personalization uh, uh, of assessment, because many, many researchers are working on personalization of learning, but I think that personalization of assessment is very important because it will actually uh, provide uh, the best uh, or the, the most appropriate assessment activity to the profile of the learner. This could be also done through open education resources. Analytics could also play a very important role. And I think that the combination of analytics, assessment analytics, artificial intelligence, and open education, this could be, uh, this could have a huge impact and a huge benefits for the learning process and for the assessment process also. I'm looking forward to that conversation. Mm -hmm.